What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Let's open up HQ over here. Oh, baby, it's always good seeing so many motorcycles in here. What's that, you might ask? Oh, that's just my new dirt bike. Don't worry about that. It's not like you go to Instagram and find out all about my new KTM 250SXF that I picked up for myself. No, no. Today's episode, of course, you saw the title of the video, is all about the Grom. We're going to be jumping aboard our little red Grom, uh, as I've so named Bubba. And we're going to talk about my first impressions of the Grom, because we did the Grom battle video but um, I think the Grom deserves a whole video unto itself. But in case this is your first time here, this is a giveaway motorcycle. That's a giveaway motorcycle. So is that, and that, and that. And none of those are. Those are all my bikes for obvious reasons. Of course, my Hayabusa with a Yami Chan on it. Of course, it's mine. But all these bikes right here. This one's heading off soon to its new winner in California. But this one, and this one, and then a little red Grom as well. Giveaway motorcycles. Hit the link to yamynoob.co and check it out. You know what? Why don't we do something really quick? Let's get a little spicy sound check of our giveaway Yamaha R1, shall we? Not bad, not bad, huh? Pretty good. But of course, the star of today's show is this cute little red Grom. Let's jump on it, let's talk about it, and let's discuss this motorcycle. So, what is the Grom? So, I, unless you've been living under a rock or something, you, you've seen something about this motorcycle if you've been on YouTube and have seen anything related to motorcycles at all in the last five years. Uh, the Honda Grom is a mini motorcycle. It is what we call a play bike, a mini bike, that sort of thing. Uh, it features a 125cc air-cooled engine, making all of probably 11 horsepower. Uh, it's got these tiny little 12-inch wheels right here. They are so adorable, so cute. The brace disc is almost as big as a whole wheel. Uh, Upside-down suspension on the Grom. Wow, can you believe it? Just kidding. It's a super-budget, simple, bare-bones part. Um, and, you know, it's weird. I remember when I first thought about the Groms and saw the Groms many, many years ago, I didn't really get it. I was like, well, it's just this tiny little bike. What's the point? Um, you know, is it just for kids or something? But really, I think the Grom offers something for anybody of any skill, of any size. I mean, it's just a really interesting, goofy little motorcycle. And it reminds us what makes motorcycling so fun in the first place. Chase on Two Wheels recently did a video where he was talking about how the Grom is the second best, or is the best second motorcycle you can buy and I tend to agree. I think it's a really interesting motorcycle to own and goof around with. And it just reminds you what actually is fun about being on two wheels. So with that being said, let's jump aboard. Let's talk about the Grom a little bit and let's just ride the thing, huh? So the first thing you notice when you swing a leg over the Grom is just how unintimidating it is. Um, this is probably the lowest seat height motorcycle I've ever ridden before. Um, it features a four-speed gearbox and an actual clutch and all that so actually compared to a scooter the Grom is much more fun because you can actually shift gears on it but it's not too much faster than your run-of-the-mill scooter to be honest I'm bogging it down here in second gear um, the interesting thing about the Grom is that it's just oh man I don't know it's it's so small and it's so lightweight and it's so playful that it's hard to not have a smile on your face while you're riding a Grom. It just reminds you that, you know, going fast the motorcycle is cool, but really the, the best part about motorcycling is just being on two wheels, um, particularly if you get a bunch of buddies of yours and you're all on Groms, that's what really makes it fun. Like when Spite and I did the Grom battle video, that was some of the most fun I've had on two wheels. Uh, on the open road in a long time. Uh, I think, you know, obviously when you consider something like, you know, doing uh, competition on track or goofing around off-road, that's a whole different ball game and it's hard to beat the fun factor of not riding with any rules. But, you know, following the rule of the law and, and being on these little bikes is, man, it's hard to beat a Grom, dude. These bikes are just super fun. I think they're really cool too if you want to get a bike that you want to have in your stable to teach someone else how to ride, man, I mean, the Grom is the most simple and the most effective way 
to teach someone how to ride a motorcycle. I, I, it would be difficult to imagine a situation in which someone rides a Grom and they get themselves into trouble. Uh, it's a really simple little motorcycle to ride and it's incredibly friendly. Uh, probably given its size and its weight. Again, this thing weighs like 240 pounds, which is only 10 more pounds than my dirt bike, which is crazy. Uh, so it's incredibly light and nimble. It flicks over side to side, super nice. Uh, and it just reminds me of, you know, riding a little 125 in Brazil or something like that, or just having fun and goofing around. The Grom is just low stakes fun. And something happens when you ride a Grom as well. Uh, you start to see the world a little bit differently, you know? When you're on a, a big motorcycle, like, you know, anything 300, 400 cc and above, you wouldn't do certain things, right? Like, you wouldn't try certain things with them, you wouldn't dare take them in certain places, but, you know, with the Grom, it just seems like everything, the, the world is like your playground almost, you know? It's like there's, there's a, like no real rules when you're on a Grom. Certainly there are still rules, you, you know what I mean, but I don't know why, but when I'm on a Grom, I just, <laughs> I just want to explore, I want to do silly things with it. And when you take away the acceleration and the speed and the weight from a motorcycle, all you're left with is something simple and fun. And I'm of the opinion that if you ride a Grom and you're not having fun or you can't find the value in riding a Grom, I don't know if you're a real motorcyclist, honestly, because um, <laughs> they're just so playful and nimble. Um, it's like a little puppy, you know? How can you not like a puppy? <laughs> Who doesn't like a puppy? They're great. The Grom to me is exactly that type of ride. You just want to try stuff with it. I don't know, you just want to go and explore. Like, I've never been over here in this parking lot, and I'm just kind of looking around now. It's, it's interesting. And that, to me, is what really brings the Grom home. It just provides a novelty factor. It just, because it's so small and lightweight and diminutive, it really provides a novelty of experience in, in all capacities, right? Like, the fact that it's so small means that it's novel. The fact that you're going to do stuff with it that you wouldn't do with a normal motorcycle makes it novel, you know? And look at this. This is full throttle. I mean, I feel like I'm on a, you know, a Toyota Corolla or something. Oh, man, I just cased it. <laughs> Whoops. I forgot the Grom does not have long travel suspension in any way. Oops. Geez, sorry, little buddy. Now, granted, it does have some limitations. Given that it's a 125, given that it has these 12-inch wheels, uh, you're probably not going to see more than 50 miles per hour on this thing. Actually, why don't we go ahead? We'll do, we'll do a top speed test on the Grom. Okay. Three gears, and we're doing 40 miles per hour, I think. About to hit top speed here. Fourth gear. What do we got, little Grom? What do we got? What do we got? 53, 54, 54. So yeah, I, I can't really go much faster than that on this thing. And again, it, it imposes limitations on you. It makes you be like, okay, well, if I can't go faster than 50, I can't take any highways. Or if I if I have a suicide, I could take, if I have a suicide wish, I could take some highways. But um, it, it really changes your whole perspective on riding. It really changes everything that you want to do with a motorcycle. And I think it's one of those bikes where you have to ride it to understand it. I, I can tell you all day long about how different and unique and interesting this motorcycle is, but until you ride one, you won't get it. And I didn't get it until I rode one. Many, many years ago, a buddy of mine picked up a Grom, and I went over to his place, and we were getting ready to go out for a ride. I was on my Daytona, he had his FZ09, and he was like, dude, I got this Grom. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy, it's so small. And he's like, take it around a, a ride around the block. So I jumped on it, took it for a quick spin, and I was like, wow, this is so fun. This is so stupid and goofy, and I, I just loved it, you know? Did I love it enough to own one myself? Probably not. Um, even though I think Groms are interesting, the type of riding that I like to do is much more, uh, I guess, extreme and competition-focused. Like, I, you know, my number one activity on a motorcycle is going out to a track day, going out to races, participating in CMRA events with my Daytona, uh, running our Endurance Ninja 400 that we have. Um, those are things that I love doing on a motorcycle. And recently as well, with my new KTM uh, 250 SXF, very lovely motorcycle, you know, climbing rocks and jumping over stuff and popping wheelies. It is a bit of an extreme experience. 
the Grom is just low stakes. It's low stakes fun. It's just super goofy and silly to ride around town. And I think everyone just has a smile on their face when they see you rolling up on the Grom. Cause it's just so goofy, you know? It's a tiny little motorcycle. So yeah, would I own one? Probably not. It's just, it's not, I've, uh, the thing is I've only got one butt, you know? And between the giveaway bikes and all my personal bikes, uh, there's just not enough butt time or seat time to really appreciate a Grom, you know? It's whisper quiet stock. Oh my God, I can barely hear it. It's so funny, like pulling the throttle and like nothing's happening. <laughs> it's it's kind of silly. I think one thing you have to keep in mind as well is even though the Grom is, uh, you know, a really fun, goofy motorcycle, uh, it is priced at 3000 something dollars, I think, 3200 bucks or something like that. So literally and and i i say this with a, a grain of salt and trying to be polite to the grom but this is the the worst feeling motorcycle i think i've ever ridden in my life it is unbelievably vibrational the clutch feel is trash the gear selector is trash the throttle feel is trash the brakes are trash <laughs> like basically everything on this motorcycle sucks like i'm not gonna lie but again if you approach in that way you're doing it all wrong, man. You're approaching a Grom in all the wrong ways if that's what you're thinking about when you're on it. You're like, oh, I don't have throttle response. I don't have good clutch feel. I don't have brakes, this and that. You're coming at it all wrong, man. You got to approach the Grom and love it for what it is. It's a tiny little stupid mini bike that you can do dumb stuff with. That's what it's for. And I think every motorcycle can benefit from being approached in that perspective, you know? You come at it from like, okay, like, what am I going to use this thing for? You're like, okay, if, you know, for example, the R1, I'm going to take it out on track. I'm going to rip fast slaps with it. I'm going to try to use all the electronics it has, this and that. I would never rate and review a Grom in the same way that I would rate and review an R1 because it obviously doesn't make any sense. Much in the same way that I wouldn't review an R1 in the way that I would review a Grom. I wouldn't turn to an R1 and be like, oh my god, it's just, it's so boring to ride on the street. I mean, I have said that, but I wouldn't say, oh, I can't do parking lot circle wheelies, and it can't, uh, you know, I don't feel like it's playful at low speeds. It's like, well, yeah, it's, it's not supposed to be, you know? It's not meant to do that. It's meant to be, uh, you know, intercontinental ballistic missile. That's what it's meant to do. Oh, that's the horn. It is still very strange being on a, uh, being on a motorcycle and having the throttle and clutch and overall shifting feel, I literally feel like I'm driving a Toyota Corolla or something. Like, it's just... <laughs> like, it literally, it only it redlines at 8,000 RPM, you know? It barely revs, and when you shift, it goes... You know? Oh, please don't turn, please don't turn. Oh my god, thank you. Left-hand turners, man, you always gotta be careful. But yeah, bopping around city streets like this. On to Grom, man. So yeah, I think everyone deserves to ride a Grom, but you have to level set your expectations. You gotta understand what the thing is for, you know? And you gotta understand that it, I think it's very difficult for a Grom to be your only motorcycle, um, just because it is so extreme in one direction. And I remember talking about this in a vlog where I was like, you should try to own a couple different motorcycles that all excel in different categories, right? Like, if you own a track bike maybe you want a, a touring bike to keep for to go on long trips maybe you want a dirt bike i personally think that having three or four motorcycles that all do very very different things is how to have the most fun with motorcycling uh, i think the grom is a little bit too much of a one-trick pony to be your only motorcycle to be honest <laughs> it literally it literally clunks into the next gear like an economy car God damn, man, this thing's such a pile of garbage, but in the best way, you know? It's just a Grom, it's a little mini bike. One of the coolest things about the Grom platform as well is, I mean, people have been modifying these and changing them around ever since they came out. I can't even begin to tell you the aftermarket scene for these motorcycles, it's nuts. I know that people go crazy with modifying these things. Yeah, anything you wanna do to a Grom, someone's probably already done it. I, I think it's very difficult to find a mod you want to do to a Grom that someone hasn't already done or thought of. Like I saw a Grom one time with the Panigale engine in it. Um, I'm sure it'll probably shred the swing arm to bits when it actually gets on the power, but the fact that it exists makes me very happy, you know? Brings me great joy. 
So one thing that's interesting about the Grom is because it's so small, because it's so lightweight, and it's because it's on these tiny little wheels and tires, um, it flicks over from side to side, probably like nothing you've ever ridden. Um, it is the fastest flicking little motorcycle you've ever experienced. Like it just pew, 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 pew. It's really interesting. <laughs> I do feel a little silly being completely geared up riding this Grom, but um, I do practice what I preach. At Gat, right boys? Gotta remain at Gat. Sometimes I think that there's something wrong with it because it's so slow and then I just realize that nope, it's just, that's, that's just the engine. Um, it is, it is an unbelievably slow motorcycle. I think teaching someone how to ride on a Grom is a great thing because it's got this low seat height, it's unbelievably approachable. If you drop it, you can literally pick it up with one arm. Um, it's so light. Like it's, it's literally like competition dirt bike lightweight. Uh, it weighs 240, you know, that's just, that's just a hair heavier than a competition dirt bike. Um, so it's unbelievably lightweight, easy to ride. You know, the brakes are actually surprisingly decent for, for what this little bike is, honestly. But yeah, it's funny, like once, once you get into a parking lot or something, it feels like the Grom is home. You're like, oh, I'm doing what this motorcycle wants me to do now, you know? Like I'm just gonna go in circles, ride as slow as I can. I'll go the other way. So I'm on a Grom and nothing really matters. I mean, literally, first gear. I'm whacking it wide open, open and closed. There's very few motorcycles that are that forgiving, guys. <laughs> so if you're trying to learn how to ride a motorcycle, man, find someone with a Grom and it will just be the easiest thing you've ever done. It's, it's incredibly simple, like even mid corner. <laughs> you could be so ridiculously aggressive with it and it will not spit you off. Look at that. I'm like stabbing the throttle while I'm turning here. Any other motorcycle you try that with, you would have been bucked off immediately. Try that with an R1, see how it goes. Let me know. But all the fundamentals are here, you know? Going from left to right, side to side, it's, it's all the same, right? Because like the fundamental dynamics of riding a motorcycle don't really change when you go from small to big. It's why, you know, all the kids who are ridiculously fast by the time that they're 12, they all practice on mini motos when they were like two or three years old. You know, they've been on two wheels since they were little tiny babies, basically, you know? And it makes sense because if you understand what a motorcycle does at any given speed, especially low speeds, you know, it'll definitely set you up to understand what it's gonna do at higher speeds. Now, that's not to say that just because you're a parking lot warrior, it makes you a MotoGP star because that's certainly not the case. And I actually really disagree with people that think that. Um, I think that just because you can ride a motorcycle slowly in a parking lot does not mean you are a track day star or a racer. Is the, those, those two skills, while they are related, are not 100% transferable. Uh, so please guys, do not think that because you're dragging knee in a parking lot, that you can go out to your favorite track and, and shred, you know, lap record times because you will not be able to do it. <laughs> you will not. You will not. Those skills are not transferable. Yeah, but yeah, I can ride over here on the sidewalk if I want to. Just cruise around here with this little Grom. I mean, you could just do whatever you want with it, man. It's such a unique motorcycling experience. Truly, truly unique. And unlike a scooter, this is still a motorcycle. It's got a clutch, it's got gears, it has a throttle that turns, it doesn't have some thumb throttle or, you know, it doesn't have anything weird like that. Um, you're not sitting on it like a scooter or something, you sit on it like a real motorcycle. Um, so that, that gives it tons of cred in my opinion. Now I have to whip a U-turn up here because that's the feeder road for the highway and that is not where I want to be with my Grom. So try to bust a little Yui up here. Just gotta make sure no one's coming in over here. Yeah, we're good. Flat out, dude. Only way to do it on a Grom, baby. For what it is, it actually picks up decent speed. 11 horsepower, getting me to 50 miles per hour. That's pretty impressive. So yeah, overall, the Grom is a garbage motorcycle in every sort of measurable, scrutable way. Throttle feels crap, clutch is crap, brakes are crap, gearbox is crap, no power sucks you know but if that's all you care about on the grom you're doing it all wrong oh why is that loose that's interesting okay we're just, that's just gonna be loose now all right maybe we can tighten that up all the way while we ride 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> so yeah, if this is the only thing you're worried about, you know, if you're just worried about power and prestige and all that, you're not looking at a Grom, you don't care about that. The Grom is much more than the sum total of its parts. That's what I'll tell you about it right now. It's much, much more than the sum total of its parts. Very interesting motorcycle, very unique riding experience, and I highly suggest you guys go and test one out. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Why don't you click this one right over here and you can keep watching some more of your sweet Papa Yam. Maybe this one will have fun memes in it. Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe I crash a motorcycle. Who can say? Maybe you should click and find out.